Today we're talking about the intercooler. A few weeks ago, and some of you have probably seen this, I posted a poll on the Jeep Sheep TV community tab. Now, if you're not familiar with the community tab, you can go to the channel page, scroll over to community, and I do post a lot of different things in there. It's kind of like a Twitter or Instagram type deal embedded right into YouTube for my subscribers, which is you. I posted a poll on there and I asked how many of you were planning on actually doing this. And to my surprise, the majority of the responses were yes, we're gonna supercharge our Jeeps. So with that being said, I have a 1994 YJ. Some of you have TJs, some of you have earlier YJs, some of you have Cherokees and Comanches and Dodge Durangos, all with this engine. And none of these things are gonna be exactly the same. So what I've done is on the community tab, I have created a post for discussion about the supercharger. Those of you that are doing this project can go in there in the comments and you can post questions and comments and things that you've learned. In that comment section is a good chance for you guys to say, hey, he did it this way, but I did it that way and it was better because of X, Y, Z. It's kind of like a little miniature forum right here on YouTube for all of us that are doing this project to talk to each other and really help each other out. Head over to the community tab and start commenting. Hey guys, welcome back. This is episode three of the $1,000 supercharger project in my 1995, 1994 Jeep YJ with the four cylinder, the 2.5 liter engine. This is again, an engine that doesn't have as much aftermarket support as some other engines. And so that's what I'm here to fix. We are gonna talk today about the intercooler. The intercooler is an integral part of a supercharging system but oftentimes it's also not used. So we're gonna talk a little bit about why I chose to use an intercooler as well as what you have to do to install it. Why do we want an intercooler in our Jeep? The first one, and this one is probably the most important one, is that it looks cool. Yeah, it looks cool. It looks awesome to have an intercooler. It tells the world that you're doing something that's not normal and you can spray paint your logo on it. So it looks cool. So number one, it looks cool. That's why we have an intercooler. The other one is it makes air cool. See, everything is cool. So what an intercooler basically is, there's multiple different types. There's air to water, air to air, and I think probably another one. But what we're gonna be talking about is the cheapest option because this is a budget build, which is the air to air. Basically all it is doing is it is passing air, and look, this is an intercooler here, it's passing hot air through one side and out the other, and it's just a little radiator that allows you to do this. So you put it on the front of your vehicle just like a normal radiator, and as rushing air goes through it, it's going to cool down the air inside the inner cooler. So it makes air cool. Now, why do we want that? We want that because it protects us from Detonation. Okay, we're gonna talk about that a lot in the upcoming episodes, but basically the biggest risk you run is when you supercharge or do any kind of forced induction, you run the risk of pre-detonation. I should put pre up there. So basically what that is, is the gasoline gets into the cylinder and it ignites before the spark plug. This is how a diesel engine works, but diesel engines are built way more robust than gasoline engines because it's really difficult on all of your components. So if you hear about someone blowing up their engine because they supercharged it or turboed it, this is probably why. Additionally, as you are compressing air, you're increasing the temperature of it. And so cooling down that air is also gonna help with your engine temperatures. And having a nice cold air charge means you're gonna get more dense air or more molecules per volume into that cylinder, which is going to give you more power. I did mention that 
compressing the air increases its temperature. Let's talk about that really briefly. This is the ideal gas law. You'll, if you take any physics or engineering courses, you'll be talking about this law extensively, and I'm going to give you the most elementary description of it that you'll probably ever get. So it goes like this. It's P V is equal to M or N R T. So right off the bat, we're going to just forget about the R. That's a constant. So it's like, it's not 50, but let's say it's 50. And from here until the end of time, that's going to be 50 for whatever the, uh, gas that you're using. So this is a constant. So you don't really have to worry about it. You don't have to calculate for it. It's just a number. M is your mass. So this is the mass, the mass of the gas. Gas, in this case, we're talking about air. We're not talking about gasoline. We're talking about air. It's a gas all around us. V is volume. We'll do VOL for that volume. And then P and T, this is pressure and this is temperature. I said a minute ago that the temperature is going to increase with the pressure. And this equation is basically what tells us that. If the volume and the mass and this constant are all constant, so those are not gonna change. The only variables that we're going to change is our pressure and our temperature. So if we increase our pressure, okay? Draw like a little arrow. We've increased our pressure. In order for this side of the equation to work, because these three values need to multiply together to equal these two values you need to get this side to be the same number as this side. And if you can't change volume, mass, or your constant in this scenario, then the only thing that can change is temperature, and the temperature has to increase. We talked in a previous episode that the supercharger does not compress the air. That's true, it's a blower. This is an Eaton supercharger, and it's a blower, it's not a compressor. But as it is shoving more and more air into the piping before it gets into the engine, it's going to create pressure. It's going to just keep shoving air in there and it does create a pressure inside of those pipes. And as that pressure increases, your temperature is going to increase. And we talked that the temperature increasing can have detrimental effects. Therefore, we want one. Now, like I said, there's a lot of superchargers that don't have intercoolers. If you look at a lot of the GM vehicles with these Eaton superchargers, it's right on top of the engine and there's no intercooler. That's perfectly fine. They're going to see some disadvantages to doing that. But in our case, what I wanted to do is I wanted to check all of the safety boxes possible because I didn't know what I was getting into. And so what I did was install an intercooler as a safety measure and it's going to cool down the air charge as well. Another reason why we want the intercooler, especially in this specific build, is in the next episode, we'll be talking about using PVC piping as our intake tubing. PVC pipe is awesome and it's really cool because you can heat it up and you can bend it to whatever shape you want. But if you get it that hot again, it's going to start getting all floppy and it'll lose its shape. So we want to make sure that the air inside the PVC pipe is nice and cool. And this did work. I was driving my Jeep around Moab in Arizona in a lot of heat and I had no issues with the piping. They were all cool to the touch. So the intercooler is definitely working, but you can run without it and you'll save yourself some money. Speaking of money, which intercooler should you buy? Now, we've got a couple major constraints. One being the cost. This is a budget build. We can't go out and buy a thousand dollar intercooler because the entire project needs to be under a thousand dollars. So we need to start looking into what are readily available intercoolers. Most cars that have turbo kits and supercharger kits look kind of like this, the little pancakes, you know, Honda Civic, whatever, they're, they're low and they're flat. And as a result, they're really wide. So if you were to go onto eBay and get the cheapest intercooler you could find that's reasonably built for say a Nissan or a Honda or whatever, it's going to be really wide. Jeeps, on the other hand, and this is a Jeep, therefore it gets a smiley face because it makes us happy. Jeeps are not wide because their grill sits within the tires, whereas these guys, their grill is the width of the vehicle, including the tires. So we have a much smaller space that we need to fit our intercooler into. And so that makes us a little bit sad, but it's also awesome. So he's happy. We're, we're just happy. 
What do you do when you run into that situation? You can get a really little intercooler. They make some that kind of look like this. And I've seen these on Jeeps that are supercharged a couple times. But they're really little. They're actually only like about that big. They fit in just this little space. And that's great and all, but you also need to be making sure you're matching the CFM cubic feet per minute that's coming out of your supercharger because this is going to be a bottleneck. I don't care how efficient it is, it's still going to create losses in your system having an intercooler, which is a reason why you may choose not to run one at all. So you need to make sure you're matching the CFM. And a lot of these little guys either don't match it or they blow our budget. So after a lot of scouring of the internet, I did find an intercooler that is almost shockingly made for this Jeep. And it came off of the Mini Cooper. Mini Coopers are tiny and they are narrow. They also have little engines that Mini Cooper supercharges from the factory. So there are a lot of components for superchargers coming out of the Mini Cooper. Additionally, our supercharger that came out of the Mercedes SLK 230 has a two inch outlet coming from the supercharger. And most of these guys or most of the aftermarket parts you can find have a two and a half inch. In most cases, you're going to want to match the diameter pipe to the smallest one you have because that's going to be the highest amount of restriction. So there is no point in getting a whole bunch of two and a half inch tubing. And like we'll talk about in the next video, there is very little two and a half inch PVC pipe. It's very difficult to get a hold of. So two inch is really the way to go. And an intercooler with a two inch inlet pipe is going to bolt on a lot better than one with a two and a half inch that you have to stretch it. So the Mini Cooper, they come in, there's an aftermarket intercooler. It's about $160. You can buy it on Amazon. It ships to your house real quickly and it's gonna fit in your Jeep just miraculously. It is amazing how well this fit. As I said before in this video series, this is not only a budget supercharger build in the way that the parts are cheap, but the tools need to be cheap as well. So I'll tell you what tools you're going to need for these next eight steps. And yes, you can install your intercooler for less than 10 steps. The first one you're going to need is an angle grinder. And I'll just write that right here. Angle grinder and cutoff wheels. You can get an angle grinder from Harbor Freight for like $12. And although it's not the best one in the world, it's probably one of the smallest, which is great because you're going to be climbing into your engine bay. Cutoff wheels, you can buy those at Harbor Freight as well or online or at like any hardware store. I don't know how much they cost, but they're not a ton of money. And this one is the big one. For this, you're going to need a welder. I understand that welders are not a low cost item. So what we did is we found the cheapest welder available on Amazon and we completed this project using just that to prove that it could be done. I think it's somewhere in the ballpark of $100, maybe $150. I'll put a link right here and in the description as to where you can find this welder. You will also see the link to that intercooler in the description as well. Another welder that I will recommend, it's slightly more money, but it's a lot less than some of the name brands. I recently purchased a Yes Welder, which is a newer company, and their entire goal is to produce good welders for a low price. I have a link for them as well, and that link will save you, I think it's like 10%. So if you decide to buy a Yes Welder, I can save you a little bit of money on that one. The install can be done in eight steps. So the first step is to remove the fan shroud. I don't have some video for this because I did it a long time ago, but I do want to warn you, we're going to be removing the fan shroud and then we are going to be moving the radiator back in the vehicle. So the fan shroud is not going to fit anymore. The fan shroud is incredibly important for the fluid flow of air getting through your radiator. You're going to be reducing the performance of your cooling by getting rid of the fan shroud. So don't do what I did and take your fan shroud, keep it, don't sell it and cut it down so it fits and then reinstall it when you're all said and done. And with this modification, there's two things that should still work. One, you should still be able to use your fan shroud if you cut it. And two, you can definitely use a clutch fan if you're still running a clutch fan. Then you're gonna wanna drain your radiator so you can remove it. Get it out of there, it's just gonna be in the way. 
test fit the intercooler. This is really important. I can't just say, hey, cut two inches here, three inches there. It's gonna vary just a little bit for your situation. So get the intercooler in there, try to mark off what you need to cut and then go to town. The back of your grill, and I kind of drew it here, the dotted lines are the back of the grill. So you can see you got your headlights there and you got your slats, you got your marker lights here. And then this is where your radiators mounted. There's some threaded inserts right there. Your intercooler is gonna wanna live somewhere in here, meaning that you're going to need to cut some of the back of your grill out. This is not gonna affect the look of your Jeep whatsoever. There's just some extra metal back there for some structure that is not necessarily needed. You can cut all of that out. The next thing you're gonna run into is your driver's side marker light. The marker lights, and this would be a top view of the marker light, it looks something like this. And the wire pigtail that goes into them only goes in one way, and it's 90 degrees. I don't know if a TJ is this way. I also don't know what you would need to cut on the grill for a TJ. So I know you're gonna ask in the comments, I have no idea. Good luck. But your wire harness on the YJ, it comes out at a 90 degree angle. On the driver's side, that 90 degree angle is where the intercooler wants to be. On the passenger side, it goes the same direction. And so it's plenty out of the way. So you can your intercooler would come over here and it'd fit just fine. Not like that. What you're gonna wanna do is there's a little tab on the top here or on the side or wherever, that prevents you from installing this marker light the wrong way. But they are symmetrical top to bottom, side to side. So you can install them the wrong way and it's still the right way. It's perfectly fine. You might not be able to read the DOT lettering on the front of it or something like that. And that is it. You remove this little tab, flip it upside down and screw it back in and you'll have plenty of room for your intercooler. The next thing you wanna do is figure out how to mount the stupid thing. So what I did is I took a two inch by two inch angle iron and it's gonna end up looking something kind of like this. And I put it on top of the intercooler and I marked out where the holes are. These are M8 bolts. So you're gonna want to drill a hole with clearance for an M8 bolt. Maybe like, I don't know, nine or 10 millimeters. Give yourself a little bit of wiggle room in case you measured wrong or if you have to slide things a little bit. You're also gonna need to cut out a little notch if you bought the same intercooler as I did. There's some little tab, you can either cut that off or you can uh, cut out a little notch in your angle iron. Next, you're gonna wanna take your angle iron and cut out these tabs here. And you'll see this in the B-roll because this section right here is what is going to mount to your grill. So here, we'll cut out these tabs like that. So now you're going to drill some holes in here and you're gonna mount to your grill at those two locations where the radiator is currently mounting. Then, if you so choose, you can cut out a big section of the two inch angle iron because this section here is going to be covering part of your intercooler and preventing air from going through it. So you can cut as much back as you want so you get more airflow. This is gonna allow you to attach your intercooler to the same mounting holes as the original radiator, which you're gonna continue using for mounting the radiator by the way. I've got two holes, this amounts to your grill, and I've got two other holes which mount to your intercooler, and a little notch here. This is all cut out here just to eliminate weight and to allow for more airflow because it was blocking the intercooler. Slides right on here with the M8 bolts, again if you're using the same intercooler that I have, which is for a Mini Cooper. And then you can mount this right into the Jeep. Once you have done that, you can again test fit your intercooler. Make sure everything is going to fit just right. And once you've test fitted your intercooler again, you can then take your radiator and set it in place where it's going to go. Now what you're going to run into is the radiator is going to run into the intercooler. This is the top of your radiator. This is the driver's side. We're going to have to cut out a notch like this big to be able to fit the exit pipe of the intercooler. Now my radiator was mounting here and here, and this was just along for the ride. So no harm cutting this guy out. 
The next thing you're gonna wanna do is create spacers. This is where the welder comes in, is you're gonna take the original spacers that mount to the top of the grill here and here, and you're gonna need to lengthen them. Take some scrap steel, take some parts of whatever you cut off, and weld on a spacer. I don't remember how long it is, but say an inch and a half to two inches. <laughs> Then in the spirit of keeping things cheap and simple, you are going to mount the intercooler and the radiator all at one time. Radiator mounts here and here are going to be captured by your intercooler angle iron. Then you can just create a spacer and you can do this with whatever you want. I used some aluminum dowel rod from Menards because it's what I had. And then you can put on your radiator mount, which has a hole up here, and a threaded piece here, and then you can put a bolt on there. That runs through all of it. So now you are attaching your intercooler and your radiator all at the same time with one piece of hardware and you don't have to complicate things. We lengthened these factory mounts for the radiator and then created a little standoff here. You can make this out of just about anything. This is an aluminum dowel. Now what we're running into since we traded off the factory bolts for M8 bolts is we're running into the head. This happened before in the factory setup and they just kind of muscled through it. I'm not going to, so we're gonna cut around this so it fits nice and flush. That's much better. Once you've done that, you're going to look into your radiator hoses because you moved the radiator back. So now you need to look into your radiator hoses and make sure that they're not getting squished. I did not have to trim my bottom radiator hose and the top one we actually trimmed in a previous episode when we were making room for the supercharger. So I don't remember having to trim that one much at all either. Now, of course, the last thing to do is to fill the radiator, make sure you don't have any leaks or air bubbles and so on, and get the Jeep back to where it was before. Something I will say about this project, so far, everything that we have done, which now this is episode three or two of the actual informational videos, everything we have done, you can still drive your Jeep. You have put the supercharger on and attached to the belt, but it's got a clutch, so you're not spinning it. You've installed the intercooler, but it's not in the way of your radiator, and you can get it to this stage and still drive it to work. That was one of the other criteria that I had for this project. I want the entire build to be essentially able to be turned off. So if I'm having some kind of issue or some kind of leak, I wanna be able to either flip a switch or pull a hose and slap an air filter on something and go back to stock parameters without having to reinvent the wheel on the side of the highway. Because, and again, in full disclosure, I've never done this before. I've never put a supercharger on a vehicle. It's the first time I've done it. And so I approach this incredibly cautiously. Now, because I've done that and because I've driven it to Moab and I'll be driving it all over the place, I'm hoping that you guys can learn from my successes and some of my failures and you won't destroy your Jeeps. So there you have it, intercooler is installed. Now your job is to subscribe to the channel and share this with just about everyone you know. I've noticed the numbers are going up, that is really great, and they need to go up more and more and more and more. So everyone can enjoy all of the work we're doing here and it'll be a lot of fun. Well, that's it for the intercooler. The next video is going to be all about the intake piping. So from the supercharger to the intake of the engine, we had to create our own custom pipe and we did so with PVC pipe. And you'll learn all about how to do that with tools you already have in your house. Again, check out the community tab so you can be a part of the little discussion happening there. And if I don't see you in the next video, I'll see you on the trail. You smell like dog.